Hello Calvary, my name is Reuben and I am the pastor for our Parker campus. And my favorite Bible character and the one that I relate to the most is Paul the Apostle. Now Paul would be considered, in my opinion, a super Christian or a super follower of Jesus, if there was ever such a thing. Aside from Jesus' ministry right here on earth, Paul was the man. Not only was he a missionary giant preaching all over with bold, unwavering faith, telling people about Jesus, he also wrote a lot of the books in the New Testament. So Paul, yeah, he was the man. But that's not why he's my favorite Bible character, and that's not why I relate to him the most. You see, as much as I gave him his props, and as much as he has done as a follower of Jesus, Paul knew and understood what made him great. It wasn't his gifts, it wasn't his abilities, or it wasn't his talents, and it definitely wasn't his past. He knew it was only by the grace of God. Listen to what he says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, starting at verse 12. He says, I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Now the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. But I receive mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. Before he was Paul the Apostle, he was Saul of Tarsus. Now to you and I today, that name doesn't hold as much weight. But for the early church to hear that name would strike fear to the followers of Jesus. Listen to how Paul describes his past. He says, I was formerly a blasphemer, someone who spoke against Christ, a persecutor, someone who was murdering and dragging men and women to prison uh, because they followed Jesus, an insolent opponent, someone who was just downright mean and arrogant and fought against those who believed in Jesus. Then one day he had a life-changing encounter with Jesus that would eternally change the direction of his life. He experienced God's saving grace. I too had a shocking past with criminal activity, addiction, and prison. Then one day in 2008, I had an encounter with Jesus. And more than an encounter, I realized I was a sinner in need of his saving grace. Now that day would forever change the direction of my life. You see, like Paul, I was a sinner of sinners who thought I was just far too gone to be saved. And God would have to have a, a lot, and I mean a lot of grace, to forgive someone like me. You ever felt that way? Well, let me encourage you again with these words from Paul. He says this, And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. You see, Paul's life, like mine, is living proof that God can save anyone and use them for his honor and glory. Paul in this letter was encouraging a young preacher, and he's encouraging us today, who may be doubting if we can be used by God because of our past, or maybe we're feeling unqualified. And Paul is like, dude, this is how gracious and patient our God is. If he can use me and trust me with his message, and I'm like public sinner number one, who could have never made it if it weren't for his grace, and now shows me off as evidence of his endless patience, he can definitely use you. You see, Paul and I both experience God's amazing grace of forgiveness. And because of that, we are not defined by our past. And you don't have to be either. All it took was for us to confess our sins. That means recognizing and admitting that we are sinners in need of a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and rose three days later. Paul also says this in Romans chapter 10, starting at verse 9. He says, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Will you allow God's grace to change the direction of your life by receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today? Because if he did it for Paul and he did it for me, he'll do it for you. God bless you.